Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give all of you a basic guide to theming inside of Godot 4. So we're going to start by creating a user interface in a new project. So I'm going to click New Interface, and then we're going to have this control node up here at the top. So I'll just go ahead and rename this to be Gameplay UI. So let's take our Gameplay UI node, and let's save this as a scene we could use across our game. So Control S, and then let's create a folder for our UI stuff. So I'll just call this UI. And then inside of here, gameplay underscore UI dot TSCN save. Next, let's add a node that's going to have some visuals. So I'll right click on gameplay UI, add child node, and let's search for a panel. So a panel is a control node that has a opaque background that you can put other stuff on. So a panel is a good base if you want to put labels for text or buttons on top of it later. So I'll go ahead and create it. And let's just take the corners of this panel and stretch it so it's a little bit larger and easier to see. So if you click on any UI node that extends from control, which is going to be any of the nodes which have a green icon, then you'll see in the inspector, there's this section for control. You can go down to theme, and this is where you can select or create a theme for your game project. So let's take theme here. Click on the drop down and choose new theme. So for this theme, you can left click on it to open it up. Now, currently the theme is embedded into this node, which is going to be saved inside of this scene, which can work fine, but you might want to reuse your custom theme across different parts of your game. So what you can do, uh, let's control us to save the gameplay scene in the theme panel, which you can open up at the bottom down here. If it's not already, you can click save as for the theme. And then inside of the UI folder, I'll just call this theme something like base theme and hit save. Now in the inspector, the theme is going to be replaced from just theme to the name of the theme file. If we expand the file system UI folder, then you'll see the theme now is saved inside of the project. So inside of the theme preview, you can see what your different components would look like, such as a button or a text label. And then the color for the background panel here, you can see that gray background, which is consistent uh, with what we're still showing on the screen here. And for when you want to customize a property in your theme, you go over to this right hand section over here. So let's start by clicking on the plus icon. And I'm going to intentionally do this wrong so I can show you. I'm going to search for panel. And let's choose panel container. So panel container and panel sound really similar, but they're actually different types of controls. So I'm going to add panel container here, add type. And there are these different tabs for different categories of properties that you can customize. And you'll see that the only one for panel container is this panel section over here. So if we want to customize uh, the default style box flat and change it to a different uh, style box setting, then we can click on the override item plus button. So this gives us an empty field now. And we can click here and choose what kind of style box we want to use for a panel container. So let's just choose style box flat. And let's click on the setting for the style box flat. And then we can change settings like the background color. So let's change the background color here. And I'm going to change it to, let's say something like a pink. And when we change the background color, you'll notice that it is not updating on the panel. So of course, this is because the panel container and a panel are different types of control notes. So you'd have to be careful when you're customizing your theme that you actually customize the right type. So clicking on gameplay UI, we can go back to the theme customization here. Let's add a new item type. And I'm going to search for panel properly this time. Let's choose panel add type. And you'll see it has a very similar property, the same one really panel and we can customize it from the default style box flat. So let's hit plus here. And then let's choose a new style box flat from the drop down. And when we do that, you'll see that in our scene, the panel has changed its background color, but also in the preview, it updates the background color here. So we can see that the background color is being overwritten. So now to change the background color, once again, let's click on style box flat over here. Let's change the background color here. And I'll change it this time to something like a dark blue. So that's going to immediately update our panels inside of the scene. And also if I click back on gameplay UI and take a look at our theme, it changes it here as well. And you can also just double click on the base theme.tres file inside of the project and customize it there directly. You don't have to necessarily click on the node which is using the theme. 
you could just customize the theme here instead. So next, let's customize a really common setting that everybody's going to want to change at some point. So if we click on our gameplay UI and we go over to the inspector, look down at theme, then you'll see some of the other theme settings like default font and font size here. You can change that. Also, you'll see the same thing if you double click on base theme.tres. Those theme settings are going to show up here as well. So you can customize it wherever you want. So if we want to change the font to something else, then we're going to need font files inside of our project. So if you go online, a really good site for finding fonts you can use is defont.com. So if I look at the bitmap.php page, which is just this uh, pixel slash bitmap section up here at the top for these kind of retro fonts, then we can try grabbing something like the Rainy Hearts font, which as you can see on the right is 100% free to use. So go ahead and download that. Then when you open up your font files, you'll get something like a .ttf, or I think another format is .otf. And these are fonts that you could install to your computer to use in other programs, like Microsoft Word, if you just install them here. But uh, to use it in our Godot project, we actually have to put it inside of our game project. So I'm going to right click on the file system for the UI folder. Let's open in File Manager. And then with my zip program, I'm just going to extract the TTF file into the UI folder. So just bring that in there. And now if we go back to Godot, we should see our font show up here. So now that we have the font, I'm going to simply drag that into the default font slot. And you'll notice that the default preview is now going to update with that font for all of the different uh, controls here. So the default font is going to basically apply to every different type of control, which shows text, which is a lot of them. So line edit, text edit, buttons, so on and so forth. And if you want to actually see that inside of your gameplay UI, we could simply add another control like a label. So I'm going to right click on panel. Let's add a child node. Let's get our label or rich text label, whatever you want. Then inside of the inspector under label text, let's add some text here. I'll type in header. And then let's center that in our panel. So I'll go to layout, let's say layout mode anchors. And then for anchors preset, I'll do center top so that the header will display at the center. But maybe we also want our text to be bigger on the screen so it's easier to see in game. So let's click on gameplay UI and we can see our theme settings here once again. So let's take the default font size and make it 24, hit enter. And you'll see both the previews and any of the child controls in our gameplay UI that are inheriting uh, those settings are going to immediately update. So now let's show how you can actually use multiple themes in combination with each other. So you can have your base theme settings here, and that's all well and good. But there might be a point in time when you want parts of your UI to look a little bit different. So let's go to panel here, and let's give panel its own custom theme. So click on inspector theme, and let's create a new theme here. So just like before, you can left click on it, open it up, and you'll see that all of these settings are still the defaults. Note that the parent theme is still setting stuff like the background color and the font color. This theme here is still using all of its defaults, and it's not going to override any of those settings yet until we set an override inside of this new theme. So let's save this child theme as something like a uh, custom game theme save. So let's say that we want this panel and anything under it anything that's going to be using the custom game theme to reset back to the default font. So let's go to theme default font in the inspector for our custom game theme new font file. And you'll see that this is going to now reset the font to this font file. So this is now overriding uh, whatever setting we have in gameplay UI for the theme. So the hierarchy is that whatever is at the top of your con so what so the way your final result is determined is that whatever is at the top of your main scene for your UI is going to be your base. So if you put your base theme up here, that's going to be your defaults. And anytime you go lower and you set custom settings, those are going to override whatever the top level settings are. So we could actually go a step further here, really. Um, inside of label, we could say go to theme overrides which instead of creating a completely separate theme, it's just going to change settings for this specific control. So we could go to like fonts and here we can override the font. So let's do a, you could do a new font file or we could, let's say, drag Rainy Hearts back in. 
So when we do this, at the top level, we have Rainy Hard set. The panel resets it back to that default font file. And then the label, once again, overrides it to be the Rainy Hearts font again. And to show that this is actually working, if I right click on the panel and let's add another label and I'll just left click and move this label into the center here. And let's say this label is using the defaults for the panel. Then you can see that this is still using whatever settings the panel has set up. It's only this label, the header label which is actually overriding the font. So we could also do stuff like the uh, colors. So if we override the font color, then that is going to change it from whatever our default is as well. So in a nutshell, whenever you need custom settings for only one specific control, and you want to make sure that those don't get changed by any of your theme settings, then you can just use a theme override. But if you have settings that you might uh, want to be used across your project, then creating a separate theme and then applying that where you need that theme uh, is probably a better way to do it for reusability purposes. So that's basically in a just how you can create themes, customize some of the settings about them. Uh, you can even use themes in a hierarchy where you have different themes that will override each other. Whatever's on top gets overwritten by whatever is under it. And then you can use theme overrides whenever you just need a couple settings for one specific control that are unique to that control. So I hope that gives all of you a pretty good rundown of how themes work inside of Godot. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end. And I will see all of you in my future video content.